In a previous lesson, I've already introduced present and past participles, and the point of this little lesson is to show that there are a few other forms that these participles can take. So let's start with a quick recap here. Present participles end in ing, so you can have words like loving or eating, right? Or uh, let's add one more, seeing. All of them end in ing, pretty straightforward. Past participles are a little harder. Uh, the regular version is basically to add ed at the end. So had loved, let's say. Uh, but then we get some irregular ones as well. We have eaten, we have seen, and so on. Okay, now the new forms to watch out for uh, still have these patterns, but they add a word or two. And the main things to, to look out for are having and then the past participle, so having loved, let's say. So that's a new version. Uh, we also have having been, there we go, having been, and then we get the present participle, so we could say eating, let's say. Okay, so having been e eating. And then one more here, the last one actually starts with being, so we're gonna write being, and we, we just add the past participle. So let's say being seen. Okay, so we have three different examples here. Now when it comes to diagramming these, there's not actually a whole lot that's new here. The main thing we have to do is just take this whole phrase, all of this together, and add it to our uh, typically a slanted line. So let's look at one example here just to make some sense of this. And I'll just draw it out by hand. So we're gonna write John, there we go, felt, and because this is a linking verb, we're going to use a, a, a predicate adjective here. So free, uh, that describes John, right? And we'll add a, another descriptor here. Let's say that he feels surprisingly free. And then the last thing we're going to do is add a participle. So let's write, having been dumped by his girlfriend, John felt surprisingly free. Okay, so... Uh, this, the having been dumped is going to go on this slanted line, right? So, having been dumped. There we go. Not a very pleasant experience. And then the last thing we need to do is we're just going to add a prepositional phrase underneath because we can uh, modify these types of phrases, right? These, these verbal uh, phrases. So, let's add something underneath by, and then girlfriend, hopefully this all fits on the screen here, girlfriend, and the last thing is we'll just write uh, his here. So a little cramped for space, but I think you get the point. And what you can see now is that this entire section here, these two phrases kind of working together, are describing John, right? Who is this John? Well, this all happened to John having been dumped by his girlfriend, and it's not surprising that well, maybe it is surprising that he now feels surprisingly uh, free. Okay, now there are lots of other cases of uh, sentences where these particular types of participles are being used, but the main takeaway here is just make sure that if you have a longer phrase like this and you can see that it's still a verbal, then write the whole thing together as one unit.